Hello everybody, my name is Star Wars Boy, how are you? And welcome back to the channel for a brand new Star Wars Battlefront 2 video. In this video, we will be finally doing guides on each of the four base classes. A few weeks ago, I asked you guys which class guides I should do first, and you guys voted to do them all in order. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Also, only a small percentage of viewers are actually subscribed, so please subscribe. It's completely free and helps out the channel. Anyways, let's get started. So starting off this 4 episode series with the Assault class, Assaults have a standard health pool of 150 and max health regeneration. Their base weapon skin varied depends on the era and faction you play, but the stats are all exactly the same. The damage per hit is 36 to 19 and the DPS is 180 to 95. The range is quite standard at 20 to 40 meters with an overheat of 25 shots. Now, the most important thing when it comes to any of the four classes is blasters. The first unlockable blaster is the A280, which is unlocked after getting 50 kills with the assault. This is a three round burst weapon, which is adaptive to all situations. The damage is 33 to 19, but of course, since it's a burst weapon, those stats triple. The rate of fire is 600 rounds per minute with a standard range of 20 to 40 meters. The overheat is 24 shots. Now, the two attachments I'd use for this gun is improved range and improved cooling. Improved range so that the weapon really is more versatile, and improved cooling which allows for 30 shots instead of 24. The next unlockable weapon for the Assault class is the CR2 which can be unlocked after getting 200 kills with the Assault class. Now, the CR2 is a weapon that dominates in very close ranges and has the fastest fire rate in the game. The damage per hit is pretty low, coming at 16 to 8 with a rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute, which is the highest round per minute in the game. The range is lower, coming at 15 to 30 meters with an overheat of 50 shots. The attachments I use are reduced recoil and sometimes I put on ion shot. Now, reduced recoil is quite self-explanatory and Ion Shot deals more damage to vehicles and turrets. Now, the reason I only use it sometimes is because Ion Shot mods actually reduce damage by 10%, which is something to be aware of. The third weapon for the Assault class is the EL-16 HFE, which can be unlocked at 400 Assault kills. This blaster is suited to longer ranges and is pretty much the opposite of the CR2. The damage per hit is quite high at 49 to 30 with a rate of fire of 200 rounds per minute. The range is standard coming in at 20 to 40 meters with a quick overheat of 15 shots. Now for the two attachments I'd recommend are stock and improved range. Stock is really important for this blaster as it reduces the recoil and improved range just makes this blaster even better at long ranges. Now, the E11D is the final weapon for the Assault class and can be unlocked after only 15 kills in co-op. Now, something many people don't know is that this weapon has the exact same stats as the default blaster. It's quite unusual since this weapon feels very different. The two attachments I would equip for this gun are reduced recoil and improved range. Now, both of those attachments are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into too much detail for them. Now, just like every character in the game, the Assault has three abilities which can actually be replaced or upgraded. Their standard L1 ability is a Thermal Detonator which deals 200 damage with a 35 second cooldown. Three available cards for this ability are the Improved Thermal Detonator, the Acid Launcher, and the Smart Ion Grenade. Their standard R1 ability is the Scan Dart which reveals enemies and has a 35 second cooldown. The cards available for this ability are the Flash Pistol which blinds enemies, the Improved Scan Dart which reveals enemies for longer, and the Toughen Up which regenerates your health. Their final middle ability is called Vanguard which does make you run faster with a shotgun. The three available cards for this ability are the Recharge Vanguard, the Slug Vanguard, and the Killstreak Vanguard. Now moving on to star cards and I have three loadouts for you guys that serve their purpose really well. The first is the battle point loadout. This is a loadout that should get you a bunch of battle points a lot faster than your teammates giving you an early chance to play the hero. The first card and the most important card to the setup is the bounty hunter card. With this card you gain points at an increased rate from 5% to 20% with a maxed out star card. 
I feel like I don't have to get into too much detail with this one because the description of the card says it all. The second card is the Improved Scan Dart, which stays active for longer, from 10 seconds to 14 seconds with a maxed out star card. The reason so many people recommend this card is because for every kill your teammates get while enemies are scanned, you will gain around 100 battle points per kill, which does really add up. The final card is the Acid Launcher, which is also good at racking in points. The cooldown of this ability is reduced from 40 seconds to 32 seconds with a maxed out star card. The Acid is in nowhere as powerful as Boss's Dioxys, and you probably won't get a kill with it, but what it does well is rack in points from people taking damage or dying in the hands of others. You'll get points for all the damage you did and the assists you got. The next loadout is the Combat Loadout, which is designed for basically any trooper mode without an objective like Supremacy and Blast. The first card is the Toughen Up card. This card regenerates your health while the ability is active and has a reduced cooldown from 30 seconds to 22 seconds with a maxed out star card. This card is honestly really useful, simply take cover and use this ability and you will be good to go. The second card is the Improved Thermal Detonator, which I'm sure is pretty self-explanatory. The blast radius is increased from 6 meters to 7 meters with a maxed out star card. This improved grenade is great, it has a faster cooldown and a larger blast radius. The final card is the Assault Training card, which grants you health on kill, from 20 health to 40 health with a maxed out star card. This card is really helpful in trying to stay alive as if your toughen up is on cooldown, you'll simply gain health for defeating enemies. There have been a bunch of times where I'd exit a gunfight on 30 health and die right after, but this card kinda prevents that from happening. Now the final loadout we have is the objective loadout which should help with the objective while the match's fate is undecided. The first card is Bodyguard. This card reduces damage from explosives and toxins from a 15% reduction to a 25% reduction with a maxed out star card. Whenever I'm on the objective and the enemy team decides it's their duty to shoot as many explosives as they can into the objective. This card won't make you invincible, but it will let you survive a thermal detonator along with other deadly explosives. The second card is the Smart Ion Grenade, which detonates near enemy turrets or shields, with a fuse time of 6 seconds to 10 seconds with a maxed out star card. When you're capturing an objective, there is always going to be an enemy with a turret or shield that slows down your capture, but this card completely gets rid of that problem. The final card is the Improved Scan Dart, which we covered earlier. The Scan Dart reveals enemies for you and your teammates, and wall hacks are just super helpful when trying to defend or take an objective. It will be a lot harder for the enemies to flank if you and your teammates know where they are. So that is going to do it for this video guys, hopefully this guide will help you guys either choose which gun to use or which loadout is best for you. My personal assault loadout is the 8280 with improved range and improved cooling with the bounty hunter, assault training and toughen up cards. Next time you play as the assault try out different cards and see which one you like the best. If you did enjoy the video and found it helpful be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you guys next time, bye, and may the force be with you, always.